Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to go down to my wormery to check in on a couple of my worm bins. I thought I'd really quickly just show where those two worm bins, three worm bins actually, reside here on my tracking spreadsheet. The three bins are not receiving food today. They're the ones that I've penciled in over here as needing attention for today. And the reason that they're not being fed is because they're already pretty far along. In each case, the bins have received over a dozen feedings. In the case of the two European nightcrawler bins that are now in the foraging process, one of them has been foraging for 26 days, the other one for a week for seven days. Those bins were all fed 15 times before the feedings were cut off and we switched them over from composting to foraging. And at some point soon we might decide that the foraging in the older of the two systems after 26 days might already be done. You could see for example up here some examples were 20 some odd days of foraging seemed to be sufficient before we decided to proceed to the next step of trying to migrate the worms out of the finished material. Now the other third system I want to check in on is the one up here, the oldest of the three. It's a, uh, it's a mixed bin of worms, a variety of different types of worms inhabiting that system. 174 days old, pretty old in terms of what is typical in my wormery. And here we've already gone past the foraging stage. In that case, for the past week now, we've been attempting to migrate the worms out of that material. And after only a week, I don't expect all the worms to have evacuated the finished compost, but I would have to think that a good number of them have probably made, made their way over into that so-called horizontal feeding zone that I set up a week ago. And as I do sometimes, I'll um, just make sure today that the food in that migration zone is still sufficiently stocked to keep that movement of the worms going. So before I head on down there, I thought I'd really quickly just share with everyone which of these bins are on the hit list for today. So uh, let's head on down there now and get to work. So down here are the three bins that I was talking about. These two on the right are the euros that are simply foraging. And in the case of a foraging bin, I'll really just be checking in on it just to make sure everything's safe and sound and everything's okay in there. Make sure nothing's um, going awry. But in the, um, in the older of the three bins, the one with the mixed population of worms, three different types of worm breeds. It's here that we're doing this so-called migration. And when I refer to migration, it's just an attempt to lure the worms out of the finished compost that they've been living in all this time over to this edge of the bin where we've been providing fresh bedding and food. And don't forget, this bin actually went through, in this case, five weeks of foraging, no fresh food added, so that when I added the food a week ago, I'm sure it was um, pretty well received. So I'm curious to see how that's progressing. I did definitely see how there was a pretty large depression. So the volume of material had dropped significantly. And just really quick before we start getting these up onto the bench to start checking in on them, see how they're coming along. I figured I would also just quickly give a little sneak preview as to where those worms, once they're done migrating um, and are ready for relocation, where they're going to be moved into. They're going to be moved into my vermibag tote, which in this particular case is being used in a fashion pretty similar to how it was designed, sitting inside of a plastic tub. Not a tote per se, this is a bus box. But in the past I've run that bin in this fashion within a plastic tub, as well as sitting inside of a wooden frame suspended in the air. So it's a, it's a pretty cool system. I'm looking forward to getting it back into service. It's already been built up, so there's all kinds of bedding and everything sitting in there kind of just marinating in its own juices and moisture and everything else becoming um, hopefully a nice cozy spot that the worms can be introduced into without sending them into shock. <laughs> so I'm going to put on a glove and we're going to get these um, two foraging bins and one migration in progress bin up on the bench, make sure everything's working well and take care of anything that needs our attention. So let's get to work. We're beginning here in the younger of the systems. Well, that's only for a week now been under this foraging process, only a week ago receiving its 15th and final feeding. And I'm trying to remember now what we fed them. I don't recall what it was offhand. Perhaps there'll be some re um, remaining bits of leftovers that we can identify the last feeding with. Although, if I follow my typical playbook, 
but then I probably used materials that are probably going to break down pretty quickly and get consumed pretty quickly because um, when I'm already at the final feeding of a worm bin I don't want to load it up with all types of materials that are going to take forever to break down so I probably used stuff that was really leafy and possibly among their favorites possibly leaving us with no leftovers but you know what kind of wasting time here trying to pick worms out of this if we fold it in half I think the kind of the general humidity within there will stay pretty comfortable for them and they won't panic hopefully the bright lights won't send them fleeing off off the um, plastic onto the dry table or onto the dry floor and the plastic I believe was a new addition as of last week I think last week we started finding great quantities of this material off the top surface that seemed like it wasn't going to get any attention whatsoever if it remained there. So we collected as much of it together as we could. We submerged it below the surface of the material where we know things are nice and damp, where the material would have a good chance of getting damp, getting softened up, getting some attention from the worms basically. And I guess we could probably do the same here today because a little bit of stuff around the very perimeter of that plastic covering is a little bit dry so it wouldn't have received much if any attention from the worms so we'll try to get that material collected up really quick so we can place it someplace in the bin where we know it's going to get a little bit more attention at this point basically anywhere other than the edge because the plastic does sort of force all the material in the bin to um, share its moisture so even though you might have a section down the middle, for example, where there's a lot of moisture because of the food, in due time, once that food is pretty much depleted, whatever moisture that that food bought with it will eventually just even out and get shared across the rest of the material in the bin. And you know, if I find stuff like this, which is, in this case, it's a sliced up avocado pit. A lot of times I'll take avocado pits and um, slice them so that they could break down more easily, but... It's not going to break down if it's a big chunk, so any little fragmentation of stuff that you can accomplish will always um, improve the speed at which the stuff will break down. This stuff here, I believe, is going to be my ultimate telltale, how these little leaf stems all do in terms of getting broken down. So now since the last feeding down the middle over here, it's probably where, all, where we're also going to find the greatest number of worms we might as well just go explore down into there really quick see how things look at this point the only thing that I think we can remedy with this check-in is the collection of a lot of large fragment material that would definitely benefit from being submerged below the surface so we're just kind of doing that along the way and I suppose if it's possible not to pull anything out of it already being kind of in the middle down the middle and submerged then we'll try to avoid pulling anything out at this point that's just better off staying down low and after a while you stop considering this as the feeding zone anymore because you might have come in here once or twice found one or two leftovers moved things around kind of disturb things to the point where there's really no concentration of food anymore but for now I think it is safe to continue treating this as the feeding zone because there are bits of um you know bedding obviously which is sort of to be expected but I believe some of the stuff I'm touching here for some reason felt like maybe bits of leftover food like here for example I guess this is the the, the tougher outer portion of a piece of asparagus there's even a worm that's made its way down into the thing and it probably doesn't appreciate me kind of wringing it around like that and pin rolling them in there so there's clearly still whole chunks of food in here that are part of the last feeding from a week ago which still need to be broken down but the foraging that will continue in this bin for the next few weeks will really be after the um, complete breakdown of everything in the bin even something like this you know the stem of a banana it looks pretty big and imposing but it actually does break down pretty quickly after a little while not quite as quickly as the rest of the banana but it too goes pretty quickly 
So I don't want to go crazy here driving these poor little guys bonkers with me picking through their space. I think we can achieve today's goal of just trying to get some of that dry large chunk material that we collected down where it's, where it's probably going to have a greater chance of breaking down. We'll dump that stuff that we collected right down here in the middle. Trying to make sure we got it all. And then make it even more appealing. Try to increase the worm traffic there even better. We'll take these leftover scraps of food that we found along the way and scatter it into there too. So I think for now we could probably still continue to consider this as our feeding zone even though we're not feeding anymore even though we're kind of in foraging mode here in this container and I guess all these stems too those are the things that are usually um, the last to go usually a pretty good indicator if you don't see any more of those anymore usually you're pretty close to the finish line with them um, fairly mature and completely broken down package of compost. Now we're hitting even more fragments of stuff. But luckily we're going to be covering up with plastic so the stuff will be damp and paper will go back on to make it into a dark place, cover it from any light pollution. Because the light might, you know, cause the worms to not want to hang out there. Sensing that it might be a little bit too bright so I do want to try to create the space where I want them to focus their energy nice and dark ideal for worm traffic I guess we're just sort of making our way across here and I keep bumping into various stuff like this mango seed getting some nice attention too I guess we'll throw that in the middle too so we kind of um, don't run into it in the outskirts of the bin actually I thought I felt some other bits out this way but you know what it doesn't matter stuff like that's definitely not going to break down over the next few weeks we'll eventually send this system into migration to try to get the worms to move out of the finished compost on their own over time and at that at that time when we set up the migration for them we'll be sure to extract all those large bits of food that might provide just enough incentive to keep them from wanting to exit the material if they got a nice big chunk of food like that right there at their disposal so the other two bins we're checking in on another one still foraging but another one migrating so let's make our way over to those next Oh, almost forgot. one more covering all right onward now here in the older of these two European nightcrawler bins where we're also foraging but we've been foraging for much longer than just a week I think what did the spreadsheet say it was closer to four weeks at this point not quite but almost four weeks very similar setup kind of just coverings to keep the light out here too just a sheet of bubble wrap to serve as our plastic covering but a type of plastic covering which hopefully allows for a little bit of airflow beneath it because of the um, unusual pattern of bubbles and gaps so the moisture that you get when you cover up with plastic is nice sometimes I just worry about airflow being restricted and that's why I like to use the bubble wrap so the material in here too we're gonna find little um, traces of material that um, was not protected from the drying effects of evaporation so the stuff on the outer edges, as kind of expected, is a little bit drier and we could help that along at the end if we want to. So we'll collect it up and do just that. Try to get it down into the bin where it's a little bit more damp. Closer to the center, away from these dry edges. But here, you know, I don't even know what we might find down the middle. I forgot what the deal was in here, but one thing you'll definitely find is lots and lots of really fine castings and I, I like to use these as sort of a, an indicator to myself these sticks and stems of the leaves you can see them in pretty good numbers in here some of them are even pretty large and have a long way to go before they break down but it's um, clearly visible when you just compare them to the 
the ones that we saw in the previous bin where there's just so many more of them and they're just so much further from being broken down. But it does seem like if that's the only game in town, they are going to get the attention they need to break down. Hopefully. That's the whole idea of this foraging thing, so that at some time in the near future we can come in here and, you know, pour through this beautiful flowing castings material and not find stuff like that anymore. And I try to limit that too, you know, when I get to about day 100 on most of my bins, it's usually my indicator to stop using leaves as bedding. But usually in the first 100 days of a warm bin's life, I, um, you know, the first 10 or 12 feedings, I'm pretty generous with the leaves. Because you got to admit, leaves are probably what the worms like the best, right? That's what they've been, you know, raised on for eons. Just programmed for breaking down matter like leaves. But I would have to guess that leaves are probably their um, specialty. So, let's not disrupt these poor little guys. There's not a lot to see in this bin, except for the little tiny bits of material that you still need to allow a little bit of time for. Assuming that that's what you're after. Some people might say, come on, dude. Look at that. It's fine. Use it. Go for it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not desperate for the, um, for the castings right now. I'm definitely a long way away from having to plant my spring garden months away. So I've got time to allow certain processes like this just to play out and see you know what the outcome is after time lapses or elapses lapses <laughs> all right you know what let's finish up this inspection i don't think we need to do anything here with this system other than maybe grab those few dry items we collected off the top surface and make sure that they're down under the surface. I like to use the middle of the bin furthest away from where the drying effects are most present out on the outer edges of the bin. So I gotta admit, you know, oh, you know, and also kind of just spreading it around too so it's not piled up against one another. A whole bunch of things stacked up against each other that all need the same attention. It's better to spread it all out. Very nice. Material in here looks really good and you know I usually don't go out of my way trying to spot cocoons but I just somehow felt like I was constantly seeing them as I was pouring through hopefully you did too and even after we eventually migrate the worms out of this material and nothing's squirming in here we'll probably um we'll probably keep an eye on all those cocoons for a little while afterwards to see what we can make of them so things look really nice in here let's get this thing covered back up all these coverings, all these, you know, pieces of paper and stuff, they really serve no purpose anymore. I guess once upon a time they used to just be sort of the top coverings of the material in the bin. So they, you know, in a way belonged to this system. They had the essence of their system kind of baked into them. <laughs> but at this point the plastic's doing all the work. This is just here for whatever purpose. And... The cardboard on top, I guess, its main job at this point is just to keep things nice and dark and cozy for the worms so they feel comfortable enough to roam. All right, on to the last one. Different game here. This is a system where the worms have been migrating now for a short while. I always go back to my little record of migrating worms out of their finished compost and under three weeks, I think 18 days is my record. So after seven days, I'm sure we're nowhere near depopulated castings, but that is the goal. It's pretty wild how much this has dropped. It's got it's got to be a good inch and a half or whatever, maybe more. Eh, let's give it an inch, inch and a half or so tops. Now I know that I built this with big cavities in it, you know, like pieces of cardboard tube which have probably collapsed now, accounting for a lot of the material dropping down this much. This plastic's doing a wonderful job too over here, keeping the uh, moisture on that end of the bin circulating and nice and comfortable for the worms. 
you know, you might have noticed the plastic was reaching out to about here, so you can tell right away the difference in the color. Hopefully the camera's picking it up, how much darker this is due to the recirculating moisture versus this being a little bit drier since only newspaper was covering it. There are little dividing walls holding up pretty good, it seems. It's riddled with holes. It's, it was punched full of tons and tons of holes, so um, no worm should have any difficulty passing through it to get over onto the other side. And the other side is, you know, the main attraction. It was our best attempt at creating a space where hopefully worms are going to come over to enjoy the food and the moisture and the grit and the abundant bedding. The company. <laughs> what doesn't it have? So we're um, already bumping into little piles of worms probably in a spot where there used to be food yeah I don't know I don't see any fragments of food just bedding so far although a lot of the black stuff we're seeing could be coffee I don't know if this is all castings already or possibly coffee it's hard to say so after a week it's probably not too big of a surprise to find that they've hustled over here out of the other side of the bin where it's dry and has been depleted of fresh feedings for weeks and weeks. It's not too surprising to see them come on over here in great numbers to take advantage of the dampness, take advantage of the fresh bedding. I keep thinking I'm going to bump into something, so here's a little piece of leftover like we saw in the other bin, a piece of asparagus. Probably has worms in it too, so I shouldn't ring it around the way I did the other one <laughs> end up giving the little guys a uh, heart attack I felt a whole bunch of stuff down here something definitely caught their attention maybe it was this oh wow it's getting worked hard this is also a mango seed but it was you know smack in the middle of this feeding area and even though it's so stripped down of almost anything on it anymore it just always continues to be a pretty popular item sometimes sometimes I get lucky with those things other times it seems like the worms couldn't care less about them wow every time I kind of drive my fingers down try to get to the bottom I feel all kinds of slithering between my fingertips this is one of the little spacers I had in there to try to hold the the wall up for a moment while I equalize the pressure coming at the wall from both directions after I after I built up the the new feeding zone that I backfilled the contents of the bin against it it stood up pretty nicely I think we've been pretty careful about not screwing it up there's still nothing wrong with it still a whole bunch of holes that are clearly visible that worms can pass through if they want to get over here but I think it probably would be a good idea to supplement the food in here a little bit because a couple pieces of asparagus, I mean, whatever it is that's causing them to um, break it down so slowly is not going to change. So it's going to break down, continue to break down a little bit slowly and it will provide a food source for them, for a few of them or whatever the case may be, eventually. But I think it's probably a good idea to really... Um, it's in our own interest, too, to make this side of the bin as um, tempting and as comfortable as possible for as many worms as possible. So we're going to um, fill this right back up to the top. Fresh bedding. I'll head upstairs, get some food we get throw in here, too, and then, um, and then let the party continue. So let me begin by heading up to the fridge, grabbing some stuff that we can rebuild this feeding zone with or replenish this in-progress feeding zone with, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue. The coffee they're getting, pretty staple item, pretty much part of every feeding that you see down here in my wormery. And what else you see down here in this plastic bag is plums. They were starting to show signs of mold, kind of got forgotten about. So they're going to get some of this as well. And I got a little bit of grit we can include. I've got a really nice collection of bedding that I originally built this out of. But it's up on the shelf, it's got a lid on it and everything, and I've got this bag of old confetti over here. I figured, you know what, let's 
just use some of this stuff up here. It's not the nice primed, aged bedding. This is just dry, boring, um, sterile bedding, basically. <laughs> bedding. I've even got some other dry, sterile bedding here, some fragments of cardboard. You can probably tell just from the size of each of these little fragments, these little pieces of material go back prior to when I got my um, really cool shredder off of Craigslist. It's an older shredder, bought it used for 20 bucks, but it's impressive how tiny it cuts things. So this is all stuff that's still left over from my old shredder that created large chunks of paper. <laughs> and um, me cutting cardboard manually with scissors. So um, progress, making progress here, you know, be able to make that sort of stuff almost instantly using the right tools. It's so impressive watching the, um, the new shredder rip through cardboard and paper and create a much finer product than anything I ever could previously. Um, it's funny how these things sound as they hit each other, as they roll out of the bag, they sound like billiard balls. <laughs> and there's a good number of them in here too, and I think each one's going to bring with it a really nice bounty of moisture to dress up this feeding area, make it even more irresistible for whatever worms that might still be occupying the other edge of the bin, the, uh, the dry side. The foraging side. Well, it's not even foraging anymore. At this point, it's just to be depopulated, basically. Looks pretty cool. I think before we um, cover up, we can possibly make use of a little bit more of this stuff. Oh, yeah, we got a little bit more coffee to feed them, too. So, a whole coffee filter's worth of coffee, as well as. I didn't count, maybe 10 or 12 little plums, plus a whole bunch of bedding, which also I think will um, be appreciated, and whatever. Sometimes I use pieces of paper like this to sort of cover things up, even though it doesn't do a very big job of keeping moisture down, it does a little, a little something, right? So um, maybe it'll just help even more of a enticing humid humidity zone down low for the worms over there so let's uh let's begin restoring things i don't know i bought this grit down did i use any i forget i guess we could sprinkle a little bit in here let it slide on down something tells me we didn't and we can get things put back uh, uh together here but before we do you know i can't resist I'm the curious type I'm always wondering hey how far did we get after seven days and this is a different type of worm population than I'm used to it does have a breed of worm that I've never had before is the blue worms and I do believe that the majority of the worms that occupy this bin are blue worms and even after we depopulate it and we move all the occupants of it out and get them over into their feeding area and then eventually into their new home we'll keep this stuff around because it's loaded probably loaded with worm cocoons which will eventually bring us more worms so even out here on the far edge i'm definitely bumping into a worm or two i thought i saw another couple a moment ago but you gotta admit not many these are just stragglers they're Kind of not paying attention, missing the boat when the rest of their gang is already over in the party zone. <laughs> now, I would imagine if we were to probe over on this side closer and closer to where there's recirculating dampness and moisture, and as we approach the um, feeding zone or the horizontal migration feeding zone, if you want to call it that, we might bump into an additional worm or two, but even here, not many, right? It's a pretty impressive performance. It does seem like if you can, you know, get everything to the point where every variable that would influence their either staying or going is dialed in neatly, possibly allowing stuff over here to dry just to the point where it's not going to become dangerous for them, but it'll become enough that it'll make them curious to see if they could find something possibly a little bit cozier. 
That's going to help. If their food has run out, that's going to probably help a lot too. <laughs> I mean, they can just keep eating and re-eating and re-eating their stuff here. So they wouldn't starve, but... But in time, I think just worms tend to wander, and if they bump into a section of the bin that's just so much more desirable to be in and to stay in, then um, then we've accomplished our goal by creating the perfect space to attract them and keep them there. So I think we're pretty close, you know? Geez, I think I factored in like another week or so to allow this process to really run its course, but I think by then we're definitely going to be... Um, Pretty heavily depopulated over here. Gosh, could I be looking at a new record here? I wonder. <laughs> Alright everyone, that's it for today's video. Spent a little bit more time down here than I expected to, which is fine. I um, sometimes just get caught up with, you know, the intriguing way these worms get their job done. I don't know why it's uh, so fascinating, but it sure is. Or at least to me it is. Hopefully for you too. <laughs> Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.